Hello and welcome to week four of the BMW 12.0 Challenge in iRacing, which this week brings us to the Roval Circuit at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now, I'm still waiting for this series to come to a track that I actually enjoy driving. Uh, I've not done too many laps around here, but the few laps I did do in practice, I really didn't get to grips with this layout. But having said that, I've put it forth on the grid, so a reasonable qualifying performance. But look at the number of drivers who didn't put a time in. They could be wild cards, so I'll be interested to see how we get on when the lights go green. Let's go to the rolling start and see how we get on. Now, I'm not too sure how much time I'm going to get to spend on iRacing this week, so this could be my one and only attempt at the Charlotte Roval this week. And in the first three weeks of this series, I've made a pretty encouraging start, so I'm keen to build on that progress this week. And if this is my only shot in the BMW, let's make it a good one as the pace car gets ready to go off. About to go green. Stay focused. Post car is off, time to do your job. Straight away we've got this tricky chicane even before you get a chance to put your foot down. And it's important to stay aware of what's going on around you. Luckily for me there I didn't have too many cars close to me so I was able to get through there quite smoothly. And um, we've maintained fourth position off the green flag, so that's pretty encouraging. I don't know if we're going to have the pace to stick with these front three. We'll try our best, but already there's a gap opening up behind us, which is encouraging. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. Try and tuck in behind Mustafa in third. As always with this BMW, I'm taking it very carefully during this opening lap. It's so easy to lose control on cold tyres. So I'm just trying to feel my way around, build up a bit of confidence with the grip. And particularly on a circuit like this one that I'm not too familiar with. Just need to take it very cautiously. I don't want to make a mistake because we've made such an encouraging start. But already that front three are beginning to pull away as we approach this tricky chicane for the first time. There's some really big curbs in there and there's a puff of smoke ahead. So I think someone might have spun off and yeah, it looks like the leader. It looks like the leader spun out there. So we are up to third place. Yeah, the number 10 car, Ollie, he was the pole position man and he set a really hot pace in qualifying. Looked like the man to beat, but he's obviously binned it going out of that chicane. Looks like he's rejoined in fifth. And I suspect he'll have the pace to be catching up with me fairly soon. He's only a few seconds back. But I shouldn't be worrying about him catching me up just yet. I should be focusing on these two cars in front because it looks like they're having a pretty decent battle. And that will work in my favour because if they're slowing each other down, trying to get around each other, that's going to bring me in touch with them again. And we are gaining on them. Oh, Matthew in second having a look up the inside there. I don't think he quite had the space to pull that one off. But yeah, these two are certainly going to be slowing each other down. So let's try and get with them as we come to rejoin the oval circuit for the second time. Right, let's go back and check out the replay and see what happened to our leader, Ollie. Look at the gap he's pulled away already. This is inside the first lap. He's already a couple of seconds clear, but he just clips that kerb on the inside, runs it a bit wide coming out and clips the wall, and that sends him into a spin. We managed to get by, and Ollie rejoins the action in fifth. And as he was pulling away, there was even more carnage into that chicane. Look at the green and white pit W make that move up the inside and absolutely pump the number four car and it causes all kinds of chaos. So as suspected, it looks like we're not going to be able to keep up with that front two and instead we've got Ollie for company again. Now we know he's a lot quicker so I'm not going to try too hard to uh, hold him up if he wants to get by and it looks like he's having a sniff up the inside so I will take a wider line as we get back on the oval. He's alongside me now, so I'm sure he'll have the drive, plus the inside line to get up to that chicane. Although he came right back onto the racing line there, he didn't give me much room. But no harm done, he's got third place back and I need to concentrate now on maintaining that gap. 
over fifth position. Yeah, Ollie was more than a second behind me at the start of that lap, but he's got such good pace around here that he was on my tail in an instant. So I didn't see any benefit of trying to defend that position. I knew he was going to get around me at some point, so I thought I'd give him the space to do it safely on this wide oval section. He did cause me to panic just a little bit there when he came back onto the racing line right in front of me, but luckily there was no contact. So, yeah, clean pass. Yeah, we're four laps in already, and only now am I starting to gain some confidence in the tyres. I'm beginning to feel just a little bit more grip as we come around these corners, and that's encouraging. That means I might be able to just up the pace a little bit, try and throw this car around a little bit more than I have been on the opening few laps. What was our lap time last time around? 129.1, so yeah, not too far off the 128s I was doing in practice. But yeah, it is starting to feel a lot more responsive now. I'm starting to uh, feel far more comfortable in this M4. Yeah, Ollie's got three seconds on me now, so he'll be chasing down the front two, no doubt. Meanwhile, behind me, two seconds back to Raphael, so that's good. Oh, I just got on the gas a bit too early and I felt the rear coming around. Tried to save it. Grazed the wall. That's costly. Have we lost two positions there? I think it looks like two cars have come by. And that was a stupid mistake. I was under no pressure. Oh, I was only just saying that I was getting more confident with the car. And I think I just got a bit overconfident. And it came back and bit me. Right, we'll cross the line and I think we'll be in sixth now. Yes, we are. So we've given away two positions. But there's a yellow out, so we might get one back here. I don't know who's gone off. There's some smoke. And it looks like we might have lost Ollie again. Right, before we check out the replay to see what happened to Ollie, let's just look at this mistake I made coming out of the chicane. Just got a bit greedy with the accelerator and it brought the rear around. I thought I might be able to save it, but just not quite. Grazed the wall. That was risky knowing the damage model with this BMW. I'm surprised the car didn't blow up. And here's Ollie in pursuit of the front two. And he takes a lot of curb on the inside. He's almost losing the rear, drifting it around this first turn. And yeah, then he finally does lose the rear and crunches into the wall. Well, he's clearly coming to this race with a win it or bin it mentality, and unfortunately on that occasion, he binned it. Yeah, got a bit loose coming out of that chicane there. Left some of my paint on the Charlotte wall. It's okay, I think we escaped without an instant point. It was only a graze. I can just about see Raphael ahead. He's almost four seconds up the road. I don't know if we've got the pace to reel him in or not, but we'll try our best. Although saying that, I've just drifted very wide there and missed the apex, so that'll cost me a few tenths. So again, I need to push hard to try and close that gap, but I don't want to push too hard and spin off again. As we're in a comfortable fifth place at the moment, and I would be happy to cross the line in fifth. I'd certainly have taken that if you'd offered it me before the start of the race. Tell you what though, I think Maxine behind might have a little bit of pace. He's been closing that gap quite rapidly over the past lap. He's almost within a second now. Oh, something happened to Raphael. Yeah, it has by the looks of it. I think he's just got a little bit out of shape coming out of that chicane. And that's cost him a lot of time. We're right on his tail now. Yeah, he just takes a huge bite of that sausage curb there and that just unsettles the car. 
gets a little bit out of shape, manages to keep it out of the wall, but it's cost him a good second. Yeah, Max seems right with me now in the rear view mirror. I'm trying my best to stick with Raphael. I think we're running fairly similar pace. But I think Max seems quicker than the pair of us, so I suspect he'll be making a move before too long. And I wouldn't be surprised if it comes up the inside onto this chicane. I'm not going to take a defensive line. I don't like hitting that chicane from the inside, so I'm going to stay where I am. I don't think Max seems close enough to make the move. He's not going to. Although I run in a little bit deep, I think I was paying a bit too much attention to my rear view and not enough attention to my breaking points. I think we might just be far enough ahead of Maxime to be safe coming into this chicane. Although I'm late on the brakes there. Oh, I knew I wasn't going to make that. Going to have to cut across the grass. And yeah, that's a slow down penalty. Oh, reluctantly, I'm going to let Maxime go through here. And just clear that penalty. But I think it's too late to do anything about it now because the white flag's out. We're on the last lap. And just like that. I was pushing for fourth, and all of a sudden I find myself back in sixth. Oh, that's a little bit frustrating, but sixth is still okay. Could have been a lot worse, although a yellow flag has come out, so has something happened to one of the drivers in front? I can't see anything, although there's a big puff of smoke. But I didn't see us pass any cars, so I think we are still in sixth. Whoever spun must have got going again. Or maybe he didn't. Yeah, it's Matthew. He's obviously hit the wall because he's got major damage and he's crashed out a second. So we have getting the position back. Oh, and there's more contact in the chicane and we might gain two more positions. They've taken each other out. Oh, man, what on earth is going on in this race? In the last lap. We've gone from sixth to third. No one wants to finish it. And incredibly, we're coming up to the final chicane and we're going to cross the line for a podium finish. I certainly wasn't expecting that. But it just goes to show that the race is never over until that checkered flag is out. I started the last lap ruining a mistake, which gave away fifth place. And then I've ended it finishing third on the podium. Right, let's take a deep breath and go back and look at a replay of an absolutely thrilling final lap which started badly with a mistake from me, just missing my braking point coming into this chicane. Again, it was a case of concentrating on what was going on behind me and not what was going on in front. That allowed Maxime Pass to take fifth position and put me back to sixth. But then, the first casualty... Matthew, the second place driver, just loses the rear and he's heading straight for the concrete wall. Whacks it hard and he almost clips the car behind. In fact, he might have just grazed him. Uh, tries to rejoin, but he must have picked up some pretty serious damage from that clout into the wall. Yeah, look at the car. He can hardly control it. And now we'll see Raphael and Maxime power past Matthew. On the approach to the chicane, currently it's Raphael with the advantage, but Maxime's going to try a pass around the outside going into this chicane, which is a brave move. And a very risky one because there's so little room. You've effectively got two cars going into one racing line. And as we all know, that very rarely works out well. And as we look at it again from the overhead view, you see Maxime had a heck of a lot of pace going around the outside, but yeah, there just wasn't room. And I'm sure both drivers will be really frustrated with that. But I benefited. Look at me nipping through to take an unlikely podium finish. So what does all this mean for my stats? And I'll tell you what it does mean for my rating. A huge boost. We're plus 52 after that third place finish. And a nice little jump in safety rating too. But the figure I'm most concerned about is over on the right. The championship points. 54 points. And I said that I might only get one shot at this race this week. And thankfully I've made it a really good one. That is going to do my championship standings the world of good. 
So that's it from iRacing for this week. Now I'll turn my attention to the race room rank schedule, which comes out tomorrow. And of course, we've also got another SCB community race night to look forward to on Friday. So lots coming up and uh, I'll see you again shortly. Cheers.